Two short hunts that were long on fines. Well, welcome to Finding America. It's really nice to see you here. Now, the weather definitely played havoc with my metal detecting this past week, but I did manage to get out twice. And even though each hunt was only three hours long, I made some really great finds and I ended up having an amazing hunt. Well, Saturday morning, I had to run an errand in a nearby town, so I decided I was going to try to fit in a few hours at a park that's close by. Now, Jason lives in the area, so I gave him a call and we met up early in the morning at the park. Now this park has been pounded to death, but I always find some neat things there. So we buckled down and we came away with some really cool stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, this is kind of a first for me. Uh, yeah. I've dug a lot of bullets, but for some reason the 69 was eluding me. And uh, I got Jason here with me, he called him over. But it looks like this one's Very been cool. cut or fired and it's like the top half fired of a 69. Yeah. You can see one ring right there. Uh -huh. How cool is that? I don't know if it was carved or fired, but I'll get it cleaned up later, but that's awesome. Very cool. That's that just got awesome. a lot yeah. of cool character. Yep, that it does. Well, this thing was giving me a 17. It wasn't very deep at all, just a few inches, and I don't know what it is. I just saw it kind of pop out like that, and I flipped it over. Might be some kind of a pen or something, or it looks like it's inlaid. What in the world is that? Uh, wow, I'm having a hard time making that one. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that one out. Which way's up? I don't know, it's pretty cool. I'll have to get that cleaned up and uh, see if I can figure it out. That was a pretty cool target. I was getting a 14, pretty close to the road here, so you have to pardon the noise, but check that out. That was about eight inches down. Really pretty darn deep. And it's the inner frame to an old pocket watch. So I'll have to get that cleaned up, see if there's any markings on it, but that's a pretty cool looking one. Well, Jason said he found something interesting. Oh. I flipped the plug over and that laid ah. right there. I haven't pulled it out yet. Big clad. Yeah. I'm Might have a half, huh? I'm guessing it's a big clad. Oh. No, that's some kind of token. Whoa. Oh, that thing freaked me out for a minute. I think Centavos, 1944 oh, it's, Centavos. It's a Mexican it peso. Huh, that's a first or for centavo, me. Centavo, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a Mexican coin. Should have like the snakes intertwined or something on that side. Yeah, it's got something that's not cleaning up quite as good oh, as the other awesome, side. But. Very cool. I wasn't sure if I was going to find you, anything today. No matter how many times you go over it. Yeah, I, this particular spot I have hunted oh. probably 15 times. You and me both. How cool is that? And it was a banging signal. <laughs> 1944. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. That is crazy. Big yeah. copper coin like that. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, man. Congrats. I like that one. Thank you. Well, just working in between the iron with that small coil, isolated a nice 12. It said it was still in the hole and I popped it and check it out. It just popped out of the ground right yeah, here. Looks good. It does, pretty good shape. Yeah. And it's gonna be an overall button. 
Are you kidding me? Oh, it's a jackrabbit. <laughs> oh boy. Very cool. Now, a lot of you guys have been watching my channel know that I have a lot of jackrabbit buttons. Matter of fact, I think I pulled, what, 20 some out of one hole? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I know a couple of you guys out there have this one on your bucket list, so I apologize <laughs> for finding another one. But <laughs> this isn't even, I mean, I'm like 30 miles away from where I found those others. Uh -huh. And uh, that's awesome. These things are so cool looking. So very happy to have that. I'll get it cleaned up, get you a better look at it. But it's very one of my cool. favorite overall buttons. Well, we have another mystery solved this week, thanks to all of you watching last week. You may recall a really strange and huge piece of lead that Chris found in last week's episode. Well, that crazy find had all of us stumped, except for Rick, who lives down in Australia and watches every single week. He let me know that that mystery find was actually a Dutch boy handy lead ingot, used back in the day by plumbers. Well, this piece that Chris found was actually just the handle to it. There were several round lead ingots that were originally attached to it. So a huge thank you goes out from me up yonder to Rick down under for helping to make this week's mystery find a mystery solved. Well, I got a pretty cool piece here, and uh, it's giving me a 17. That's about four to six inches. And uh, I'll pull it out right here, but uh, you might recognize that. It's actually one of the that's very clean. One of the best ones I've dug. Look at that. Wow. Now that's going to be a Model T ignition contact. I'm trying to remember if this goes on the distributor cap or the uh, it goes on the coil. Goes on the, the coil. Box, that's yep. right. Okay. And uh, see, Jason and I are both car guys. <laughs> so, very cool. Yep, that's I awful. definitely like that. And uh, it's actually in excellent shape. I mean, yeah, usually it's a better shape than the ones I've found. Yeah, that's the best one I've ever found. Yeah. Pretty cool. Well, we made some nice finds at that park, but it certainly wasn't going to be enough for this week's video. So I checked the weather and I saw that I had one last opportunity on Monday before the next storm rolled in. So I got up bright and early, was able to get out there for three hours before the weather turned bad. And I went to a permission that's pretty new, actually. I haven't really had a chance to hunt it yet, but it consists of six houses on one city block. Now, four of them stand in a row and we're all built in 1938. So I started there and after an hour, I realized while the yard was loaded, it was only loaded with modern clad coinage. Well, I had a couple more hours to hunt, so I decided to head across the street to the owner's personal house that was built in 1951. So I was hoping to find some old stuff there because it had never been metal detected before. Well, this yard was loaded as well, but this one was loaded with the good stuff. I'm well, just hunting in the front yard of one of the permissions I have on this street. Uh, this is supposed to be have been built in the 50s or 60s. So I decided I'd come over here and see what I could get. I already got a couple clad dimes that were just under the surface and got a 12 and I dug down about 5 inches. Got an early Jefferson, 1942. That's uh, a good sign. We'll keep on going and see if we can get anything else here. Well, my next signal here was giving me a 22-23, and uh, just a couple inches down, I got an old wheat penny, and uh, this one's going to be a 1955. So, uh, that's a good sign. Might be some older things in this yard. 
Well, this one was a 23, and I dug down, and I got a memorial. Now, I wouldn't normally film these at all, but I got a little bonus find. Not a marble, but looks like I got a little dinosaur. <laughs> don't know if that's Barney. I don't think Barney had teeth like that, but pretty cool little piece, and uh, just had to show you that one. I have a little collection of these uh, little weird toys, the little bonus ones, so it'll fit right in. Well, just a foot up from uh, the green dinosaur, I got a 23, only about two, three inches down, and I got another old wheat penny. This one's going to be a 45 with the Philadelphia Mint mark. I'm actually finding more old coins at this 50s, 60s house than I was down there at the row houses that were built in 1938. I think they may have redone the landscaping because all I'm getting is clad. But uh, I'm not giving up on them. But uh, I moved over here just to see what I could find. And uh, pretty encouraging so far. Now I'm on the side yard of this. It has a pretty substantial side yard. And uh, getting a lot of signals. And this one was a 25 high tone. Now it turned out to be a piece of garbage, but I'm so glad to see it because it's old garbage. And it's an old lid to an old Pond's face cream jar. Now this is definitely early 1900s, so it predates this house. And that's a good thing because it tells me there was activity here before these houses were here. Now over there is one of the oldest streets in town. It's lined with a lot of late 1800s houses. Uh, this was an expansion area in the late 1800s from the downtown. And further down over there is a very old school. So uh, a lot of people probably walked through these fields and played in them, picnics. So I'm hoping to get finds from those people as well as vintage 40s, 50s pieces from this house. And uh, that's a great sign. I'm so glad to find that lid. Well, someone was giving me a 2021, dug down a few inches, saw it was a bottle cap. I was like, eh, well. But once again, it's kind of old trash. Now, I've never found this cap before. It's pretty cool. So I enjoy looking them up and learning about the companies as well. And this one says Cream of Kentucky. And uh, it's got a U.S. patent office registered with it for the name. So pretty cool uh definitely gonna have some fun looking that one up but it definitely looks old so neat little find well i just got a nice surprise i've been digging i've been getting a lot of 24 25 signals i've been digging and digging and they're either a high toning memorial or a clad dime so i got another 25 i'm digging not thinking much about it, threw the dirt up on the drop cloth, and can you see the gleam? Yeah, it's time for the water because I got a nice silver dime. Look at that. Uh, let me pick it up. Oh, it's a Merc. Oh, that's awesome. All right, let me give it a spray and uh, see if I can get a date. Hopefully I can make it out. I have so much sweat in my eyes. <laughs> oh, nice. Boy, finding a lot of Mercs lately. I'll definitely take that. Oh, it's going to be a 1944. All right. That is awesome. Very awesome. So very happy to have that. And uh, yeah, still working the side yard of this house. And uh, got a nice piece of silver. Well, I'll tell you what, all I can say is woohoo. <laughs> I was, uh, I put the dirt back in, got my drop cloth, put it in my pouch, in my pocket, and uh, ran the coil over. I always check your holes, and I got another 25. So it was on the edge just outside of my hole, so I 
cut a little plug and I started to bring the dirt out. I just want to see, check it out. Another silver dime all the way down there. Man, I'll tell you what, that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna put it down here and we'll see what we got. Uh, let's see, let's see if I can learn how to aim this thing, huh? All right, man, that's amazing. Another Merc, can you believe it? Two Mercs in one hole. Ah, oh, that's awesome. I just can't get over it. Been a long time since that happened. And this one. I'm having trouble seeing. That's another 44. Check that out. That's pretty crazy. Ah, oh, two Mercury's one hole and both of them same year. Ah, and it wasn't like they were dropped when they were new. They got some wear on them, so what are the odds of both of them being the same date? Wow. I will definitely take that. Well, my next thing was give me a 24. Again, not very deep, two, three inches. And I got another old weedy. This was gonna be a 56 with a Denver Met mark. Well, this one was giving me a 13. And uh, I've got a dog next door that's taking an interest in me. <laughs> But I got a 13, I dug down, and I saw a nickel down there. I didn't think anything of it. I was hoping for a buffalo, but I, it turned out, I started wiping it off and check this out. <laughs> Silver war nickel. How cool is that? Yeah, this one's gonna be a 44, and uh, not sure on the mint mark. I'll have to clean that up when I get back, but uh, hey, that's pretty cool. A little piece of silver in the front yard of this place. Well, I'm just working the side yard of this pretty little house and uh, got myself a 15. I was not expecting this. It appears I got a toy car. I have not flipped it over yet, so we're gonna find out together. Holy cow, oh, that's a cool one. Wow, look at that. That thing is wild. It's definitely got some H to it. I wonder if it's early Hot Wheels. Let's see. Nope, looks like uh, some type of Chinese one, but still very cool looking. Look at that. <laughs> I will definitely take that. I'll get it cleaned up and we'll get a better look at it, but I definitely like it. Oh, I got something very nice in this hole. Now, I just found that old toy car right here. And when I knelt down to dig this, I slid my coil this way as I laid the detector down and it hit a high tone. So I was gonna check that out as soon as I got done with this. And boy, I'm glad I hit this, cause check that out. Big silver in the hole. Looks to be a quarter. Heck yeah. Oh my gosh. What is it? Just pop this off. Oh, it looks like I think it's over Washington from the looks of it. Let me get a little bit of water. The, the dog is congratulating me. Thank you very much, buddy. <laughs> uh, I think he just wants to come out and dig for me. Oh, look at that. It's a beauty. 1953 and really good shape, too. You can tell. It's got a bit of luster still to it. Ah, uh, wow, another piece of silver. Ah, oh, I'll tell you what, I love digging these 50s houses.
Well, got a nice sharp 13 signal about four inches down. Another early Jefferson. This one's going to be a 41. So, definitely a lot of old nickels in the yard, too. Well, I'll tell you, I just got that 41 nickel out of this hole. Now, that was the only signal I got was a 13, 13. I took that nickel out, ran my coil over it again, got a 25. Never heard the high tone. That's why I dig it all. Not just because I want to dig every signal, but a lot of times they're masking something underneath. And check out what it was masking. Silver dime. And that might be, it just might be, oh yeah, I got a Merc. Wow. Just hiding in the hole underneath and slightly off to the side of that nickel. Ah, nice little spill. Unbelievable. It's a 44. Just like the other two that I dug. <laughs> Is that not crazy? Three 44 mercs in one day. Uh, don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> wow. Five silver. Amazing. Well, I'll tell you what, you just don't want to quit when you're having a day like this. Uh, going along the sidewalk over here, I'd say about four feet from the sidewalk, just running parallel, got a really scratchy high tone. And it was ringing nice, 28, 29. Finally got it from between these roots and check this out. Wow, yet another silver. Ah, uh, I think it might be a Merc again. I tell you what, if it's a 44, I'm going to freak out. <laughs> oh, this is insane. This is what I'm trying to remember now. Oh, it is a Merc. Is that not amazing? Having a little trouble seeing it because I am sweating like a pig out here. It is probably close to 90, and it's all in my eyes, of course. Nope, this one's going to be a 45. <laughs> That's insane. That's a whole lot of silver for one small yard. I'm telling you guys, don't pass up the 50s houses. I always have a good time hunting them, especially like this one that's never been hunted before. Well, I may have only gotten six hours of metal detecting in, but it was a six hours full of fun and great finds. And I can't wait to get back to that new permission. And here's another look at all the great things that were found in this episode. Well, in honor of that great little 50s yard, I just had to share some amazing photographs of what life in America was like during the 1950s. And since we live in the 2020s, I know you're gonna love these. And remember, it's history that makes a finder treasure. And I can't wait to see you back here next week on Finding America.